Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the 11th episode of Shadow's House. And the last episode, you know, usually I, before I watch uh, like an episode, I kind of briefly skim through the previous one to kind of quickly refresh myself on what happened in the previous episode, but I, I don't need to do that this time. I remember what happened last time we finished our debut. Not not everyone finished their debut, unfortunately. A shadow form not properly established because of relationship not properly established, so kind of faded away, and the doll that was left behind just repurposed as a veiled doll and put to work and kept think I think given that evil drink or whatever, right? So, so that just a tragic end to the, the, to that pair. But we also had like happy stuff with the, the cool way Emily, Emiliko and Kate finished off, which is really exciting, great stuff. And, you know, they passed a debut in general, which was something to be happy about. And then we got the whole dark drink that was causing trouble with people, you know, memories messing with, but I think also caused them to like, you know, worship the grandfather or whatever. Like we had that, that one scene and then we have another scene with the eyes and just, uh yeah but we also got all the lore on the shadows and how they're formed and you know step by step the general process which is cool to get like it was just it was a crazy episode so we're in for this one right so hopefully things will start to look up maybe maybe i don't know it did not end it did not end on a happy not happy tone but maybe we could figure some stuff out this episode get some stuff done uh, we'll see we'll see so let's jump into it three two one play. Uh, Aniplex. Bum, 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 bum. Is that Emilico's hand? Yeah. As expected of her. But... Please don't look at me like that, Emilico. Yeah, we have seen her writing in a room before. That's a good point. I love the determination from Kate to get her... I was about to say the exact same thing. Her beloved Emilico back. Like, wow. We are on the same page. Let's go, Kate. This is cool, in a way, because it does a... <clears throat> I mean, Emilico's had a lot of focus. Not Kate so much. I mean, she's been stuck in a cage for the past several episodes. But this is a chance for Kate to really step up and kind of, yeah, has some focus on her. That is pretty cool. Before we had Emilico fighting for Kate, you know, saving her. Now we have Kate fighting for Emilico, saving her. Like, it's kind of reversal. The kind of, which we kind of see showcasing, like, the opening itself, you know. Mirrors and flipping and the reversals and stuff like that. It's really cool stuff. I don't think I can ever see that shot of the opening the same way again. <sighs> mm. A Hollow Shadow. The name of the song. But that title, A Hollow Shadow, there's like a lot of meaning in that too. This is what I mean by the, you know, flipping reversal mirror. The dark drink. Well, I shouldn't read while walking. <laughs> Especially downstairs while holding fire, like that's so dangerous. The chemistry with your face. Right. Or culture, no.
Yeah, the doll, the doll thingy. One day. <laughs> I didn't get throw it on the floor. <laughs> Not a lot of remorse for throwing it on the floor, I see. I guess sure feel sorry for you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought it was. Uh, but it's perfect for for Kate to see. <laughs> I know, right? Like. Because, yeah, writing down things does help you remember them. I've. I have heard that before. <laughs> To nobody in particular. Yeah, I remember that. We were separated for a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, point kind of proven there. Is that a sniffle? Like a sad sniffle? Yeah, we did hear about that before. I'm sweating to death, so I don't need, I don't need a reason to drink a lot of water right now. But I guess this is what we're going to try, but... I don't know if it'll be that simple, but worth a try. Let's flush her out. I mean, in the case of that one situation, like, there was like, there quite a lot of water, like, an unpleasant amount. Uh. More water. Chug, chug, chug. Drink more anyway. Maybe we could splash some water on the eyes, see if, see if that does anything. Peer pressure to drink. Uh, is it doing anything? Is it helping? Yeah. Takes a lot of water. Even though we're doing this to try to help, I still feel bad about this. Do you care at all? Do you... I tried to see if it did anything. Uh, yeah, it really does come across as like a torture scene, but it's not the intent. Uh, But like, if you didn't know the context of the scene, that's really what it would look like. Like, I want a quality time between these two. It's not, it's not quite what I had in mind. Uh, we gotta get that bad stuff out. She's blushing a bit. Is that a good sign? Uh, I feel like, yeah, I feel like some emotions getting through. So it's probably helping. I... Uh, yeah, I think something's getting through. It's gonna break. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. Uh. 
On the bright side, you are better. There's nothing we can do really about the rum situation, but at least you're feeling better now. She's steaming. Oh. Secrets between just us. Okay, we're riding a train somewhere. Are we like actually out of the house? Because that's kind of crazy. Yeah, we're like seeing a little bit of outside. It's kind of crazy. Whew. <laughs> That's kind of messed up. She is quite attractive, though. So yeah, this is... Are we getting like a new batch of dolls? Uh, that's... That's an evil look. They don't always seem excited to be here. <clears throat> I disagree. <laughs> well, he doesn't look too, uh, too unhappy. I see some, some favoritism here. Don't drink it. Uh. If somebody gives an evil smirk as you're drinking something, that's a sign to stop immediately. Uh. Uh. Did we see those kind of eyes back in episode one when... When they, the dolls first arrived, I don't think we did. <sighs> this is the room where we keep the unconscious children. Yeah, you could say that. I. That was so sudden, I couldn't even really. <laughs> yeah, so she's like straight up saying that the whole doll thing was a straight up lie, and that they're just straight up kidnapped children. Like that's, is that what was that? Is that seriously what like what she's saying? Because that, that just really messed up. I, I mean, it was already fairly messed up to begin with, but... <laughs> that, like, amplifies it greatly. Uh, <laughs> I guess we're checking up on these guys. Because that just seems like such a, such a big deal for something they just kind of casually drop there. <laughs>
Good for you. I'm not gonna ship this, but it's good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's pretty crazy. I could barely process it myself. Because I just I recontextualize so much stuff, like I have to reevaluate really the degree of how messed up certain things were throughout the course of the show. Yeah, he's got the eyes too. Hmm. Different, he's no different than me, he's the same old Sean. Yeah, almost as if he's changed somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's just not right. As if he's a blank slate again. Gotta give this boy some water. I got the hose. <laughs> when he drank that out beverage, <laughs> just noticed her. <laughs> We're manly men punching each other. Don't get in the way, Kate. Ooh. Damn. Oh. Gonna retaliate. Ooh. Pretty solid hit. <laughs> Not a lot of blocking going on. I mean, there's like one fist catch, but otherwise just straight up taking the hits both ways. Can I imagine the knife edge death match in Yu Yu Hakusho with like no blocking, just punching back and forth when one of them falls? So who needs water? Just knock some sense into him with your fist. That's how men deal with the problem. Who needs water? That's a girl way to deal with it. <laughs> well, that was that. I wonder if we'll get a cleansing or scene in this this pair as well. I wonder if they'll deal with it in their own unique way. The way the other pair did. Although I don't I don't think she was she would mind as much as John did. Really? But I mean we'll see. We'll see how how she factors into this. <laughs> well that's what she's upset about. Louise should kiss her living doll until she's back to normal. That's how she should solve it. I will smack you. It's a fine name. 
Okay. Uh, I like it so far. I, uh. <laughs> I, I have mixed feelings about this, but I appreciated the uh, the deep kiss before it. I still think we should cleanse cleanse her though. A really tall veiled doll. The tall part is what's throwing me off. Cause Rem isn't tall. Uh, is that the black beverage? Uh, and also, I guess just straight up got kidnapped again. I think calling this heavy handed, put it mildly. Asking the important questions. <laughs> well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> he was not a big fan of that. I mean, Edward sucks. You don't have to preach at the choir on that one. Everyone hates Edward. We're pretty much all in agreement on this. Yeah, seriously. Priorities. Yeah, that was not cool. <laughs> the hatred of Edward binds us. <laughs> Avengers assembled. Okay, that may have been a uh, a scout or something. Uh, and we end off on that. I don't know what I was expecting. Of course we end off on that. Now we just need some soot going from mouth to mouth on that shot. Mari's trying to really miss Rom. Bum 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 huh Stinger title To Lord Grandfather's Wing Okay 
that was the uh the 11th episode of shadow's house and this episode i mean yeah i mean this was pretty much yeah kate's chance to try to fight for emilico right i mean it really is what the the overall theme of the episode was luckily luckily she has her little like diary and stuff that she wrote down like that was been a thing for a while you know we, we knew that was a thing so it's great how that really came into play as being beneficial for you know end game plot stuff for sure it's just it's hard watching Amelia go like that just so not herself just a blank slated puppet that just does what she's told you know inhabits the values of the household and all that and just completely lacks the heart that the personality everything that she had before everything that makes the miliko miliko was just gone and she just kind of like a the hollow shell shadow kind of you know hollow shell just doing her duty right and just uh, it hurts to watch but we did get the, we did get the hint from that to use the water <clears throat> Because of course a black drink is so related, to, like in some capacity. So we just gotta gotta clear it out, right, with the water, clear out that soot. But that led to one of the hardest to watch scenes in the whole episode, right? Like this, this scene was so well done, but it's still it's just I don't even know what to say about the scene, right? Kate, she wants to help Emilico, and she does what she can do, like. She doesn't even have a guarantee this will work, right? But, like, it's all she can do. It's the only idea she has. So she sits sits Emilico down and just forces her to drink water, drink more and more water. Even when she gets to the point where she's like, I, I really don't want to do this anymore. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm about to vomit this stuff out. Like, this is really unpleasant. I, I don't want to do this anymore. Keep doing it anyway. Just... I don't know. It just it hurts to watch. Because, you know, you know, you know, Kate doesn't want to do it either, right? Like, but she has to. For her own good, but that's why it's such a well done scene. It's just uh, I don't really have much more to say on it. But man, the more I think about it, the more messed up it seems like. But it works. That's the important thing. It does work. We start to see kind of little by little, kind of an effect that it's having. Till eventually, she does kind of break down into tears because the emotions can finally come through. Right, what's was kind of covering it before has been washed away, and now it can flood back out. And it did lead to a really do a very nice embrace scene between the two of them. If it wasn't so sad, the circumstances, I, it would have been really enjoyable to watch the hugging. But And then we have another batch of uh, living dolls show up. Because we had a bit of a train ride in like uh, coal mining or whatever village, whatever that was. Whatever they whatever they called it. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so coal kind of place, right? Apparently has a bit of a, an effect on the people, and we had a new batch of uh, of newbies, which are forced to drink the drink, and brought to their place. And you know, we we know we know the general process that they go through, and it's not a pleasant one. We just bring our kidnapped, unconscious children to the room after making them drink some weird thing. And it was right after that that we got our sudden drop of information <clears throat> that I want to make sure I I read properly right now. There are several villages surrounding the manor, right? You were born in one of them. I'm starting to see more and more why people compare this to, to Promise Neverland. But your memory was erased before you were brought to the Shadow's house. Emilico, you are a human. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> I didn't have much of a reaction to this scene. I apologize for that. But just... I don't know, just... It's one of those things that kind of took some time to really settle in, like the the actual meaning, the depth of it, like what that truth, what that truly means. But once it did settle in, damn. Like, uh, I mean, we already had a fairly big reveal last episode with the the origin of the shadows and how that works, right? <clears throat> so that was already felt like a pretty big, pretty big thing. And now on the flip side, we have a big reveal in regards to the living dolls, and that's they're not dolls at all. Right, I was I fully bought into that being just how it worked. I could have swore early on there was a comment about Emiliko being sturdy because she was a doll. I, I thought maybe I'm just making that up. I don't know, but I thought that was a thing like when she fell out the window. But I don't know, I don't know. But like, it was already kind of a messed up situation having these 
dolls literally built for the sake of being taken over by these shadows or whatever that was already kind of a messed up thing but if the overall process is having these villages that are just nearby we just go to them we kidnap whatever children look useful enough bring them back over to the house erase their memories brainwash them make them into our obedient slaves eventually being completely consumed by these literal shadow monsters and that just and that being the end of it like there's really no words to describe how horrible that whole thing is right like i like words really doesn't do it justice it really it really doesn't like damn like i almost want to rewatch the show now just because knowing that really adds a new level a new layer to like everything for sure because there was a lot i was kind of like tolerating putting up with didn't seem i think was too bad under the guise that these were dolls right they weren't well they weren't actually people so maybe x and y aren't too bad but now that they are human things are a lot worse so like i don't know this this house needs to be stopped i thought i already thought that but like especially now this house needs to be stopped this whole system these literal shadow creatures just are literally Essentially sacrificing people for the sake of being human like themselves, right? I mean the villages are essentially farms like in Neverland. Like it's it's a very similar kind of system. Very similar but very different. So Yeah, then we had our, our group. I mean actually before that we had the John Sean stuff. I don't have too much to say about that, but it was it was a cool scene just because it was similar, you know, to the Kate Emilico thing, but also very different, much more manly way to, to resolve the conflict, which I was I found that funny. So and now then we have like Lou, Lou and Louise, which they didn't really have a cleansing kind of scene exactly. Lou, Louise doesn't seem to mind the new Lou too much. But she did learn a new trick where she like pumps soot into, into her body through her mouth to like control her or whatever again kind of messed up but you know whatever whatever we have bigger things to worry about than, than that and it was kind of funny so uh, as i said it kind of mixed plans on that whole thing but miliko's been kidnapped that's that's a big problem we gotta gotta find her before it's too late so that's kind of our mission for next episode so good luck on that so so that's that. I don't really have too much to say on the episode. <laughs> like, there really wasn't much to be happy about throughout the course of the episode. Like, I was gonna say, hey, Emilico got back to normal, that's cool, right? But then she, like, got kidnapped, which kind of sort of invalidated the happiness I would have gotten from that, from rescuing her in that sense. She was put in danger in another sense, so kind of like one step forward, one step back sort of sort of deal. Like, there's probably made much progress there because of that. These they just kidnap random kids from villages. It's just it's so horrible. It's so horrible. But yeah. I feel like I've said that too much, but like it it it, it bears repeating, I think. And I don't think there's anything else you really want to say about about the episode. Really not a lot of comedy in it. I think controlling Lou was like the most comedic thing throughout the episode. Although, I mean, the John Sean punching each other was fairly com com fairly comical to me. But other than that, not too much levity throughout the episode. Just uh, a, lot of, a lot of dark stuff, really. So, yeah, that's all I really got to say about the episode. If you enjoyed my reaction to it, I hope you click the like button and Patreon and watch more of my videos. Maybe leave a comment if you're up for it. So, yeah, bye-bye.